Stretch him on video screen. Stand by, brother. Well, grace and peace, grace and peace. Assalamu alaikum, shalom. Greetings to our listening audience. You are tuned in to On Purpose with Vicky Radio Broadcast, radio podcast, the nation's hottest radio show. We are so very pleased that you are with us today. No and that you one can make an intelligent very, decision very without coach. being properly informed. Uh, the illustrious brother. This is why this Hunter world has okay. uh, wants to control, control the media. Yeah. The final call news hour, brother. Please, please read our audience. This is why media hype. Praise to Allah. Take you up. Good afternoon, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> you, you are watching who's really good hey, uh, my because the media can make a wicked man look good and make a good man look evil that is why who is a simulcasting his show the final call news hour and perhaps he'll be able to tell you a bit about that as well. Oh, yes, ma'am. And good afternoon, everybody. Or good morning. Good afternoon. What is this? Is it afternoon? Yes, it's sir. No, it's, it's a afternoon. little bit afternoon. Yeah, good afternoon, right. everybody. You're watching a special <laughs> edition of the Final Call News Hour simulcast yes. with On Purpose with Vicky yes. X yes. live on <laughs> TV Radio Live dot com. <laughs> uh, we have a very, 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 very special <laughs> show. Because on the line, we have a very, very special guest. Yes. I hope he's still there. We got to make sure the brother's still there. <laughs> yeah. um, the issue that we're coming out of today, before we get into it, yes, it is, is volume number 37, issue number 33, and it reads, Jay-Z Under Siege, uh -oh. hip-hop entrepreneur and social activist called before Security and Exchange Commission amid other uh, fights in the music and production industry. Should we be worried? Ooh, oh. wait. Very interesting. Very interesting. Yes, indeed. It's an excellent, excellent article. Absolutely. Awesome. And um, like I said, we have a very, 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 very <laughs> special guest today. Because yeah. on the line, we want to get right into it because we got Sister Vicky. We got this beautiful brother. And his name is Brother Willie. Muhammad, yes. and he's on the line. Let me see if we can pull him up. Yes, sir. Brother Willie, are you there, sir? Sister Vicky, do we have him plugged oh. in? You haven't turned up? That would be nice. Go ahead, sir. Brother Willie? All right, we on. Uh, and, and for those of us who are... um in the listening audience if you could man just help us out and let us know how the audio sound yes. this is this is something that we that we're doing new through the advent of technology okay. our brother who hails from the great crescent city of new orleans on, louisiana yeah. um by the advent of technology he doesn't have to be here in pb radio studios live he could be sitting at home chilling <laughs> He not eating or drinking anything because we fast <laughs> in this okay, the, the holy month of Ramadan. <laughs> but he could be chilling from the privacy of his own home Come and on. join us. We are honored to have our brother, student minister Willie Muhammad yes. of New Orleans. Brother, welcome to the program. Absolutely. It's awesome. Praise be to Allah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's such a privilege. 
No, I was just gonna say, um, Brother Willie, if you could, man, just tell us a little bit about yourself for for those who don't know you, because we know you because we, we in the same we working in the same vineyard. But for those who are in the listening audience who don't know you, tell them about yourself and a little bit about the work, which by the way, Brother Willie is doing a tremendous work tremendous in the city work. of New Orleans. Yes. Just tell them a little bit about yourself and about the work. Um, about who you work for, your boss, who we know <laughs> is the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. Come on. Yes, sir. Um, uh, I'm a New Orleans native. I'm um, from New Orleans. I'm a short All right. Praise be to Allah. Now we have a number of questions because I know one of the other things that you do, Brother Willie, um, is is you're into relationships. Yes. yes. <laughs> and we wanna we wanna touch on the uh we want to touch on, on, on that aspect of it, and I just got a message that your audio is not that great, so I'm going to try and adjust that while we... Um... Yes, sir. And if you need me, I'll just put it like plug this, sir. Okay. Just... Let's let's try... Will they, will they still be able to hear them on your on your broadcast? I just want to make sure. Yes, sir. Well, I'm just thinking about just push the, one of the microphones close, but go ahead. I'm going to try it. Okay. Hold on. Stand by. Okay. Say something, Brother Willie. Peace. Can everybody hear me? Yes. Yeah, we can hear you a lot better. Okay, so everybody on the on the audience, if you could, yes. um, just let us know if you can hear Brother Willie a little bit better. And of course, Brother Willie is the student minister from the uh, Great Crescent City of New Orleans, Louisiana, a, the representative yes. of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan in that city, and he's doing a tremendous work. Um, one of the things that we wanted to talk about was, you know, Brother does uh, relationships. Uh, advice. So, Sister Vicky, if if you want to ask some questions, ask brother some questions. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, um, I'm so pleased that you're with us. I know that you have a singles weekend coming up, and apparently, you just finished doing another radio broadcast on Block Talk um, related to. I think it was with New Beginnings or something. Uh, and correct me if I'm wrong. With Brother Marcus and Sister uh, Cecilia Muhammad, and. Um, Brother, I put out a post just at the last minute last evening, and I asked folks to DM me if they want to do it privately, any questions they may have for you, and may I tell you, the questions came flooding in. And ah. just prior to me um, submitting some of these questions to you, would you just briefly tell us why is marriage even important? You know, there's an African proverb that says the ruining of a nation begins in the homes of his family, right? Mm -hmm. And we know being students of the Most Elijah Muhammad, we're taught that you can't have a strong nation if you don't have strong families, and you can't have strong families if you don't have strong marriages. If you look, if we were to take the time out and see what sociologists uh, contribute to the delinquency and the high levels of violence and crime, they connect that to the breakdown of the families, right? Yes, sir. So this is why marriage is important. The, the Chinese philosopher Confucius talks about how children learn the skills that they need to learn to be able to be effective citizens by what they observe and what they experience and what they learn in the homes. So if, for many of us, the first book that we read, the first movie that we see that teaches us proper male and or improper male and female relationships is what we observe in our homes coming up as children. So if we are in homes and we don't have a child where they can observe a father and mother together, then where do they get the example on how um, they should interact? I also teach the educator as well, and check this out. And I was at a GED program, and I did an experiment, a class exercise with some students. 
On one side of the class, I put a sign on the wall that said agree. On the other side, I put a sign on the wall that said disagree. Mm -hmm. And I asked them, do they see themselves getting married? And 100% of the students stood on the side that said disagree. And when I saw mm -hmm. it, I'm like, wow. wow. But I knew what that came from. They responded that way because they had never really seen healthy relationships mm -hmm. and healthy marriages. Right. That is absolutely, you're so, so right. And very, very interesting uh, statistics that you are talking about. Thank you for giving us that insight. One of the first questions um, that was posed, and of course, uh, being with the Nation of Islam, folk are aware uh, of um, the idea and the notion of having multiple wives. So apparently this was a concern. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were like, ooh, you're going to start with that question. But trust me, we're going to get into some other more universal questions as well. But this one came from a Muslim sister who said, yes, ma'am, please have the brother expound on one man, one wife for the Nation of Islam members. Although she said HQ, which I'm assuming is headquarters, says up to four are permitted. She said, until the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan gives instructions for permission of polygamy. What's your response to that, sir? <laughs> well, for those who, well, I would direct that sister to the letter that's found in study guide number 18, Rising Above Emotion to the Thinking of God. Okay. Where the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan issues a warning. He specifically said to black men, but it's really for all men, but since our work is in resurrecting the black man. It was dedicated, it was directed toward us. And the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan warned us in the Nation of Islam to not embark into that lifestyle that Allah, has, Allah permits, right? He permits it, but under certain circumstances. Mm -hmm. So the minister told us to stay away from that. And he said one of the reasons to stay away from that is because our view of the black woman is filthy, right? Mm -hmm. And he said filthy because of of how we've been brought up in this society in America. So the practice in the nation of Islam is one man, one wife. And there's a Bible verse that says how fools try to tread in a uh, past where wise men try, where wise men avoid. So mm. anybody that has would understand. If you go and read the scripture, you will realize that the taking on of more than one wife it's a challenge, and it's a trial. So only a fool will run to that. See, people who have lower desires, they think it's about, I have more than one wife, mm -hmm. then I can do a orgy, or I can do this. So that's not the purpose of that process. That process to, it is to right a wrong, not to right an imbalance in the society, mm -hmm. where there are more women than men. But check this out. Once that imbalance is, 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 is right, is set right, then... That practice is put on hold. And I heard that, I think I heard Donald Mr. Louis Farrakhan say that Allah also has a strong, intense feeling toward polygamy. It's not something mm. that, that wants us to continue to do, but it's meant to rectify a problem in a relationship. So I would tell this to any sisters. If anybody tries to come to solicit you to be a second wife, a third wife, they're not following the album of Mr. Louis Farrakhan. Right. And I was to the brothers, if you try to do that, you're not following the album of Mr. Louis Farrakhan. And we need to spend all of our energy and creativity working to extract from the one wife that we have the joy that God has placed in her for us. That's what we need to work at. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, so that. um, so all you brothers, <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. with them desires, all you slick, all you slick ones out there, trying to have two or three or four, okay. you yes. not with Minister Farrakhan, all right. if that's what you want. Oh, come on now, come we, we got to make that plain and simple. Yes, sir. <laughs> Thank you so much uh, for that uh, uh, response, sir. Now, this one is another loaded one. And actually, this beautiful sister uh, has several questions. And her first is, she said that the saying goes, in the, that uh, if the first three years of marriage are hard, how do you know that it's the case, that's the case to keep going in the marriage? Or when do you know you truly have made a bad decision? I'm going to connect that with another question she has. And she says, if two people abuse the courtship process and get married, 
and they've been arguing and not getting along since marriage, how do you know when to throw in the towel or keep going? Or does a three-year mark really make a difference? You know, when it says like the first three years of a marriage is, uh, is, a, is a trial part, but I would say even beyond that, mm -hmm. the institution of marriage itself is a difficult one. Remember the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan said that it's the most difficult process second to the self-creation of, of Allah. Mm. See, if we understand what God's plan is for the human being, mm. then we will understand the divine purpose in marriage. The purpose, the divine purpose of the institution of marriage is to help the human being, both man and woman, grow into God. So we are put into this process where we try one another as men try women. As women, you, you all try us. Now, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan said that when we get to a part where the spirit of love is not present in the marriage, then we have to make a decision, right? Mm -hmm. So even if we have started the courtship process, we abused the courtship process, and now we are married. That doesn't just mean that we quickly pack our bags up and go. Mm -hmm. If we work hard enough, we can change something that started off wrong and make it right. Think about how you find people, they they find homes, right? You can if you in real estate, you can get a home that's in complete disarray where other people pass by and they're like, man, that house is junky. But somebody can come with the right skill and the right finances and resources and they renovate that house. Now think about this. Go research this. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, in the article titled The Pain of Infidelity, said the following. He said that the eight steps of atonement can bring a marriage from death to life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, we wow. find ourselves in that environment, we have to ask ourselves now, let's, do we have the desire to implement the eight steps of atonement? And so what that means is, we would have to first examine ourselves and say, I've been wrong. That's good. Other person would say, I've been wrong. And then we need to do what we don't do enough. Is that now I'm sharing this with somebody on yesterday. We get married and we spend hours picking who's going to be the bridesmaid, who's mm -hmm. going to be the groom. And we want to make sure that their socks match the flowers and their bow tie <laughs> match. <laughs> right. Right? Yes, sir. We realize that those people that we select to be in those sacred positions, they're supposed to be people that will aid us during mm -hmm. the difficulty of our marriage. That's right. So, so what, what I've noticed, and I always try to tell our believers here in the city, is that one of the worst things to do is that when we go through difficulty in our marriage, one of the worst things that we can do that end up it ends up causing the death of our marriages is we take our problems when we go in the corner and we say, nobody has ever experienced it. Mm. Right. <laughs> this is the time for you to go and seek the advice of couples who have successful examples of marriage. So the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan said the following. He said, when we're thinking about divorce, there should be a period of separation, preferably for six months, where we use that period where we try to reevaluate and try to reassess and to, uh, to heal that relationship. And he said, during that six months, we don't need to have brother stress on the side or sister stress on the side or going back and forth, communicating with somebody who's not our husband or not our wife on social media. No, we should be using that to try to work through the problems that we have. Mm -hmm. And after that six months, if we still have the same issue, then each individual has to make that decision for themselves. Right. Wow. This is, I mean, these are such, this is such excellent advice. Another question, sir. Another question. It says that um, if you confront your husband that he's a liar and he says he can change, is it too late for that? Like, why is he comfortable lying to you and then promising you that he'll change? She also says, what are the rules of violation of, of your husband? Your husband doesn't properly put, oh, when he doesn't properly put his ex-wife in her place. What are the rules regarding exes and children when the person has moved on? And if the ex doesn't respect the new relationship and your spouse does nothing about it, is it okay to leave? 
Oh my goodness. <laughs> Brother Lily, she, <laughs> she loaned up on you, brother. <laughs> this, and, and so this is directly, I'm talking about Instagram and Facebook, they were not playing. You hear me? So this is the thing. First, let's start off with this. We have that inclination to want to blame our spouse, right? Yes, sir. Uh, my, my spouse is a liar. My spouse is this. But... Even if he may be a liar, there's some part of that we got to look at ourselves. That's right. Because I'm pretty sure he didn't start lying once they became married. So right. at some point, the person has to look at themselves and say, how come I missed these signs before we got to this point, right? Now, let's say he is that. Usually, lying is a indicator of a greater problem. Mm-hmm. And oftentimes, Sometimes men lie because they don't want to appear to be a failure in the face of the woman that they love. Mm. Sometimes people lie because they're trying to cover up an inadequacy or a shortcoming or a lack, right? Mm. So first, they have to have this discussion and let the person know that if you continue lying, you are going to end this relationship. Mm. Now, we, none of us are perfect, but they have to have a talk where you give somebody the opportunity to say, listen, you know, like sometimes they grant a clemency in South Africa, reconciliation. This is an opportunity that we're going to start from fresh. But if you mess up and you continue to lie, then I would have to make a decision. But I don't know if they're in the nation of Islam or they're not, but if they are in the nation of Islam, a part of that process of giving them a second chance should include a real meaningful uh, effort to work on themselves and asking them to get some auditing and go and get some counseling. Mm -hmm. The other thing, if you're not in the nation of Islam, you should go and get some counseling. Go talk to your pastor. Go talk to to a counselor. And then when you go talk to those counselors, you got to keep it real. You can't come there and tell the pastor or the imam or the minister like you want to give them 40% of the story and not give them all of the story. Right. Now, as it relates to the wife, the problem with the ex-wife, I will, I'm willing to bet that this is not a new problem. It was always there. Right. Mm-hmm. But oftentimes, we overlook those signs right. because, because of the sex is good, because right. of, they have money, right? Yes, but what so. needs to happen when we... What needs to happen is sometimes, brothers and sisters, that you all might bear witness, sometimes it takes a third party to help our spouse to see something that we've been trying to get them to do. So what I would do is I would arrange to have a sit down with a family that is a blended family, that they're married, but they also have the baby mama and the baby daddy. Right. And then let's sit with them and share with them our problems and, and see how they handle it and then see what advice to make it. Mm. Then after that, maybe want to have another third party to bring the ex-wife together, to bring the couple together and where in a respectful manner, the current wife can say, I feel you're disrespecting me. Because a lot of times we talk to one another, but we don't sit down and talk with one another mm. because she may find something out. She may find that the ex-wife is feeling like the current wife disrespects her. Mm-hmm. Maybe the children are going back and forth telling the ex-wife, this is what daddy's wife said about you. But yeah. we have to have those conversations. And when we have those conversations in a respectful, controlled environment, you'll be amazed about the, about the significant breakthroughs and healing that can take place. That's excellent. That's excellent. One other question. Oh, crazy. Yes, sir. That's excellent. Another question. This is, enough. This is from Instagram. I'm going back and forth to Instagram and Facebook. This one says, do you have to be a registered Muslim in order to do a courtship? She, she broke up. This question, I'm sorry, she, this question says, do you have to be a registered Muslim in order to do a courtship? Um, no, see, the minister did a lecture called the principles of courtship, right? right. So it's the principles that somebody who's in church, they can take it and they can apply it in their Christian 
relationship. If they're in the synagogue, if they're in the temple, you should learn the principles. And while you asked that question, it made me think about how as Muslims, we may want to begin to start doing some community workshops that we can begin to start sharing with our community. Let me tell you the value of the courtship process. Remember the Mosaic Elijah Muhammad said there were three things, that three sciences that the devil denied us of, uh, right? The science of business, the science of warfare, and the science of mating. Yes, sir. The courtship process, if done properly, helps us to regain the knowledge of the science of mating. So it's not just something Muslims need, our community needs it, right? So it's a process used by people regardless of their religious affiliation. Yes, sir. That's awesome. That's awesome. Another question. It says here, what if the brother lies, this is apparently in the nation of Islam, that says the brother lies about women he's courted in the mosque, and then you find out they never ended the courtship. What kind of brother or sister are you dealing with? Another one that's connected to that question says, what is the rule concerning phones in a relationship? Should that be okay? She's breaking up. Okay, can you hear me now? The first question you said, a sister said, what if she finds out that the brother lied and lied about, yes, sir, lied about uh, ending a courtship? A courtship. And then the, uh, connected the to thing. that, uh, connected to that, it, and she goes on to say, what is the rule concerning phones in a relationship? Should that be an open book? She's breaking up, breaking up. So she's asking, brother, can you hear me, brother Willie? I can hear you. Can hear you. Okay, so she said, what is the rules? You, you. <laughs> Can't believe I'm asking this. Concerning <laughs> phones in relationship, should that be an open book? Is that what you said? Okay, yes, wait. Can you all hear me? Yeah, yes, we can sir. hear you. It's two questions, right? One, if a sister found out that a brother had lied about previous courtships, right, and he hadn't broken the courtships off, right, right. Then the other one is about what's the policy as relates to phones and courtships, right. Should that be an what was it? Should that be Basically, an open? If they, can have each if they should have each other. Oh, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> <On a question. laughs> if they can have each other's paths for, I guess it depends on. And brother, I, I see you kind of going in and out. Um, if they can have, if they should have each other's passwords, mm -hmm. should it be an open book right. policy? Should okay, there be so total trust? Let's deal with, with regards that. to the phones. Let's deal with the first one first. You know. Maya Angelou said this, that when a person shows you who they are, believe them. Mm -hmm. And see, sometimes, like, if, a, if you have caught a person in numerous lies and you're in the process of courting, that should be a warning sign right there that this is not the person that's meant for me. That's right. And see, this is what I was talking about earlier, how we see signs, but we ignore them. Mm -hmm. So you didn't caught this person lying. And then you still continue with the courtship. My question would be, after you have caught them lying, after you have caught them lying, why are you still courting them? See, now it falls back on you. Right. Because if you know somebody is lying to you, why are you in that cell? That cell marks your value. Value continue to be a way to identify that the DNC or the respect to tell you the truth. See, that's a issue. Now, right. but about this it, it's called courtship right yes, it's sir. not called relationship it's not called my bae my boo if you go to court and you get caught lying what happens you could be thrown in jail that's right perjury <laughs> you can it's perjury or your case can be dismissed and we need to have the same type mm -hmm. of standards when it comes to courtship if you catch somebody consistently lying that should be enough evidence to say this courtship needs to end. But if we are not honest ourselves, we may end up tolerating stuff like that because we may know that, hey, I have lied to them. Mm -hmm. Now, as it relates to cell phones, you're not married. And if you, first of all, if we're courting, where I'm trying to determine if I want to... Uh, marry you or accept your offer to marriage and I have so much distrust that I need to get your password while we're courting, that's a sign that there's a problem. Absolutely. 
it's one thing after you get into the latter portion of that courtship and you all are thinking about being married and all of this stuff. But if you are trying to get access to his passwords or to her passwords while you're courting, that's a sign that, hey, I need to pump the brakes because something up. And I will say this. Sometimes, because it seems like that's a sister who asked that question, asked mm-hmm. that question. As a brother, you may need to say, yo, man, this is a red sign that this sister has trust issues. Right. She has not healed from a previous relationship. And you need to ask yourself as a brother, do I want to be engaged and marry a sister that will have me under that type of scrutiny? Right. FOI class ended at 9.30. You got home at you got home at, at 10 o'clock. You're supposed to get home at, at 9.40. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, the mosque is not right around the corner. Right. Or she following up, Brother Captain. Was Brother so-and-so at, did he show up for FOI class? Hmm. Then that's a problem, right? Yes, sir. And let me interject too, Brother, yes. uh, brother Willie, um, because that also speaks to, you know, in my view, it speaks to a certain insecurity mm. uh, 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 with regards to this sister, because uh, you know, if we're secure that Allah is God, we we gotta know that we can't control anything that anyone is going to do, including our spouse, including our courtship partner. And so, when we're secure in the fact that Allah is God, and on Him should we rely and. In him is our security. Man, it don't matter what that other person is doing. You know what I'm saying? If they're doing something wrong, if they're doing something uh, uh, that they shouldn't be doing, eventually it's gonna come to light. You know, so so that so that's more of a to me. It sounds kind of like a, a spiritual problem in the sense that that sister is not secure with uh, not only herself but with the fact that Allah is the ultimate grantor of security. That's it. <laughs> And I like how you said that, Brother Herman, because personally, I feel this way. Like you said, I can't follow my wife around 24-7. That's right. I think sometimes we spend, not to say my wife is cheating or anything like that, because she's not, but we spend so much time trying to follow and see what somebody else is doing when that time should really be applied to what I should prepare myself to where I'm able to make the right decision if I find out they are cheap. Right. See, that's what I talk about in my, I don't talk about that specifically in my book, but in my book, uh, The Journey to Get the Love That that You Desire Begins With You, is focused on, it's a self-improvement, it's a a relationship book wrapped around the principle of self-improvement. Yeah. We spend so much trying to, and what the other person is going to do, what the other person is going to think. And we do very little time working on ourselves. Yes, mm. that's true. That's yes true. sir. Yes, sir. That's true. And the final question that we received in, because we got about, about 35 more minutes, but the final question we received um, from our uh, internet family is um, in terms of the priority of the wife and the children. Uh, does she come after God or after the child? Where is the woman as a priority? Do the children take up priority over husband and wife? Mm. Uh, I would think in some in, in in some instances, right? In some instances, but you know, in regards to that, I don't know. Uh, that's a very interesting question. I don't know if that's asked from the standpoint of a brother or for a sister. Is it in some? There are some things where the children need our full attention, right? Right. Like, for example, when my wife had my, my daughter, if my daughter, when she was crying to be breastfed, I couldn't say, I don't need you to breastfeed her right now. I need you to give me a massage. Right. <laughs> it's, it's different, right? It's, it, right. But see, these are the type of discussions we need to have when we enter into courtship, and these are the type of questions that we need to actually ask. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, and let me ask you this, Brother Willie, because... It, it appears to me that, you know, especially social conditions today, like you just read a statistic when we opened up about people who just didn't even want to desire to be married. Mm-hmm. Um, how important is marriage, especially in the wake of, uh, 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 of us trying to have a nation of mm-hmm. our own? And it seems as though, you know, so there's an awakening taking place amongst our people, but there can't be an awakening 
in my view, if we don't have that balance, if we don't have that ma'at, if we don't have that that those strong relationships and those strong marriages, can you speak to that for a moment? I heard Sister Ava say this. She said, if you study history, you will see that history has been ruled by families. Mm. Right? Mm. You see, ruled by families. Go and do the statistics on the benefit, the benefits of marriage. They say that married couples have more wealth, right? Married couples live longer. Right. And it might be a shocker, so put your seatbelts on. <laughs> the quality of sex between married couples is better than those who are not married. All right. Go and look at children who are raised in a married family. They have high IQs, less less delinquency. They get, get involved in less juvenile delinquency. In there is no, it's no coincidence that the high divorce rate, that we have a high divorce rate in, in society, and we speak of society. Remember, Louis Farrakhan said that divorce is an indicator of a moral decline. Mm -hmm. Think about it in regards to what we taught about Yaku. Imagine if the people that he brought to the island didn't want to get married. Right. Right? is very significant. And what's happening right now, Satan has flipped this thing so much that the people who the institution of marriage is meant for, they don't want to get married. And now you see more people of the same sex who want to get married more than the people who mm. the institution is meant for. Mm. So Satan has flipped this thing upside down. Whoa. And as a result, the suffering, right? No woman can really give her full self to a man who is more willing to make a commitment on a 30-year loan for a house and he don't want to make a commitment to her to put a ring on her finger. Wow. Whoa. That's powerful. <laughs> That's powerful. So yes, this is why I'm encouraging to brothers in the Nation of Islam who are watching this. Nation building is also marriage, brothers. Mm -hmm. And some of us have gotten to this thing that we think that nation building is only your activity with the final call newspaper. Mm -hmm. Own activity with going after the dead. No, but a part of nation building is making sure that we strengthen our families and we have healthy marriages. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's powerful. That, that is, yes, sir. That is so powerful. Talk to us a little bit about your conflict resolution um, work. Tell us what that is, what that's about, how you're engaging in the community and so forth. Yeah. We started doing the work of conflict resolution here in the city of New Orleans in 2000, but well, in 2011. And then as the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan kind of geared up for the 10, 10, 15 the, of the historic, the commemoration of the historic Million Man March, Brother Jesse informed the minister about the work that we were doing with conflict resolution, and the minister talked about how we needed conflict resolution centers. So the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan kind of sent word through Brother Jesse to me to and he wanted the model that we are using to be the model for the 10,000 fillers. So awesome. I've traveled since 10, 10, 15, I and some members of our team have traveled to like 22 cities, helping them to set up the conflict resolution centers. And some cities have taken the training and run with it, like Austin, uh, Baltimore, they're running with it. And some cities have not taken the training and run with it. But since 2015, on the national level, I think we have resolve a total of about I think maybe about 74 or 75 conflicts wow. right and, and with the conflict what it is it's simple we are helping them to do what they're not doing people are not talking man people mm. are not and people are judging one another from I, from a distance I right. thought he said or he told me or I heard he said this and we bring them together they realize like yo dang I I the dude, like, yo, man, that's not what I meant. I didn't say that. Right. And we help solve them. So our effort with the conflict resolution is to be proactive. We're trying to get there before somebody gets killed because we understand not many people have that ability to let the death of a loved one go. Wow. That is powerful. So what does some of that work entail, the conflict resolution? It entails simply somebody calls our telephone and... We set up a face-to-face -face meeting with the person that called, find out all the details, we let them know it's not po no police involvement. Then we try to find out who they're beefing with, 
and we try to establish contact with the other person and we let them know that brother so-and-so has contacted us. He told us y'all have a little issue. He wants to resolve it. So we're here to hear your side of the story. Once we hear his side of the story, the goal now is to get them to come to the table. We do it at the mosque. It's secure. People protect. And we get them to do what they have not been doing, which is to discuss. Many of our people don't know how to resolve conflict. Many of our people idea resolving conflict is something that their parents told them when they were growing up that if somebody play with you, pick something up and bust them in the head. Mm -hmm. And yes, look at this, man. We live in a culture of violence, right? right? And we don't realize how we contribute to it. Here's an example. I don't know if you remember when Chris Brown and Soldier Boy had a little beef on social media. Right. And Soldier Boy and Chris Brown was like, you, I'm gonna pull up on you, I'm gonna do X, Y, and Z. Right. Then somebody got in their ears and said, hey, why not make this a charity event where we can get pay-per-view and you all can fight and the charity can go to an event? They were like, yeah, let's do that. And everybody on so a lot of people on social media was like, that's how we do it. That's how we used to do it back in the old days. And as I was watching this, I said, man, part of the problem. Like, this is how we get to where guns are being used. Now, it started off with fighting. Civilized people don't resort to violence first. Civilized right. people have a conversation first, right? Yes, and sir. We... No, I think we still good. Um, so, and, and that just reminds me, Brother Willie, of, you know, and it's it's awesome that you're bringing this conflict resolution because it just reminds me of, of the way that we're taught to handle our problems when we first get to or come into the mosque, when we first come into this lifestyle, that we don't have, we don't allow uh, slack top gossip mm -hmm. and backbiting. If, if something is said, we have to put those two persons together so that we can get to the bottom of it and eliminate all of that because that is what destroys uh, uh, organizations, mosques, churches, is slack talk, gossip, uh, you know what I'm saying? Just loose lips. Yeah. You know, as they say, loose lips sink ships. Yes. And that and that is exactly what it is, man. If we just if we just practice those principles, but a lot of times now we don't, you know. Uh, people just think that the way that you resolve the conflict is to go get a gun. Mm -hmm. And we live in it become so desensitized with it's like the reality shows. Look at what we have before us. How do the women on love and hip hop resolve their conflicts? Right. How, how do government officials resolve their conflicts, right? And I'm no fan of Donald Trump, but I could him for saying that he would be have he was willing to have a sit down with the guy from North Korea because right. oftentimes we don't see world leaders do that. And so what we see at the top it, it sprinkled down to the bottom. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes, sir. And so in, in this age, because we receive so many. Can you hear me okay, brother? You loud and clear. Great. Because we receive several uh, questions via uh, Instagram and uh, Facebook, I wanted to know how, do you have any advice for folks so when a person is hurt that um, we're careful in how we use our power, we're judicious in how we use our social media platforms, uh, when we are hurt in a situation, because sometimes um, um, we can, you know, sometimes people do things and they're just sharing their heart. They're not trying to target someone, but sometimes we, we have to be careful because it can be sort of a fine line um, in how we respond in relationships where um, we can end up using our social media platform in a way that perhaps we didn't intend to. Um, wow. What would you say about that? I'll share with you something that the Alma Mensa Louis Farrakhan's barber told me that he got from the minister. And he asked the minister, how, did you, how do you know when you're responding to an offense and your ego is driving your response? Mm. And the Alma Mensa Louis Farrakhan said that the way that you can determine if our ego is driving our response is that if in our response we cut the person up so bad that we don't give them an opportunity to redeem themselves. Mm. Wow. So the way we can determine about whether or not if we're using the social media properly is we need to, before we post, the most analyzed Muhammad said, think five times before yeah. you speak. You might be right. So in that thinking five times before we say something, we need to be asking ourselves, what is my motive? Yes. Am I doing this to teach a lesson? 
Or am I doing this because I want everybody else to know that the person that did me wrong is a low down dog? Mm -hmm. Or do I want to damage how other people see them? Or if I'm doing this because I want everybody's attention, I want everybody to hit me up on Facebook and say, brother so-and-so, you all right? Sister so-and-so, you okay? What's our motive, mm -hmm. right? Yes, and sir. Sometimes, sometimes people air their issues out on Facebook and they have never... They have never approached a person who did them wrong. Right. And if we are airing out our issues on Facebook before we even let the person know, yo, you offended me, then our motive isn't right. We're That's really sweet. attention, right? So the best, and really then after we, if somebody did hurt us and we go to them, and then they look like, Yo, man, I apologize. Then what need does we what what do we need to put put it on Facebook that we had an issue? You know, Allah says in the Quran how Satan excites our vain desires. Mm. And if and if we're not careful with this social media, if we're not developed enough, this social media plays on our vanity. Absolutely. So true. So you, you see people go live and they're like, I'm like, yo, why are you telling us this? Like, I see people, <laughs> people post, and I'm like, like they post and everything. Ooh, I almost got in a wreck. I was driving and there was a mosquito in the car. Right. Okay, so you driving now posting about a mosquito in the car. Wow. <laughs> right. Yes, sir. Right? And we got to really work on ourselves, man. We got to really work on ourselves. And we have to check our motive. Why am I doing this? Because the minister said our motive is going to determine how successful our efforts are in any given thing. Mm -hmm. That is so good. Did you have anything, uh, Nixon? Did you want to say? I, I was just going to say, too, you know, d just adding to that, um, social media gives the enemy and ability to mm, hide as well on, you know what on. i mean so we really should be careful uh with regards to how we use social media and the supreme captain's office of the nation of islam actually put out a social media guide to help us as to what we should be posting on facebook and how we should be posting because the enemy i mean that, that, hey i call it they call it fb but i call it fbi because that's the largest intelligence gathering apparatus that the world has ever seen and the, and the thing about it is we give up all that information okay. like brother willie said you know what i'm saying we posted about mosquitoes and we gotta go <laughs> pee and all this other stuff and we give it away for free you know so, so so we gotta really be careful about how we use uh social media and i i definitely agree with you also brother willie that it's definitely a vanity uh, peace because it gives people I always say social media is a, a gift and a curse because it gives people the ability to have a voice where they otherwise didn't have a voice. Right. Yes, sir. You know, so it speaks to a lot of different issues. Yes, sir. That is that is true because you know, think about it. You got somebody that goes to goes from nobody know who they were. And now Wait, 25 people watching me on Facebook right. Live? 100 people watching me on Facebook Live? And, and you can begin to start seeing like people who are doing stuff for vanity. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, like, it's like you, it's not, I'm just keeping it 100. Which I've seen some people like every picture on their Instagram is a self. Right. Like every picture. <laughs> you know, I'm like, yo, there's, there's like nothing else. You know right. what I'm saying? So, but. When we have a void, then we use things to try to fill us up. That's right. When we try to use things to try to fill us up, when we cut that social media off, we still have that void. There's no way of escaping working on ourselves. Yes, we got to work on ourselves. What you just said is so absolutely powerful and so important. And um, Brother Willie, a part of my testimony is I was in the belly of the beast in a federal uh, facility in Texas. Um, uh, just less than what a year and a half or so ago, and served about um, well this summer to be two years, huh, mom? And uh, then this summer, um, I was doing activist work and some other things interrelated uh, to the Great Recession and some um, things that were happening, you know, related to real estate and so forth. But anyway, right. uh, doing pointing out uh, wrongdoing and have made some pretty high level enemies. And in the process of that, me coming home and then doing a half a year of another form of custody through um, halfway house. 
Um, which then my mom brings me a phone, uh, finally, not right away, but finally, and uh, uh, get on social media, and I'm just like shocked. <laughs> I was so amazed and shocked at what was going on, and um, just really uh, tripped out and trying to figure my way with this social media. I was really devastated and amazed at how the misuse, and like you said, some of the details are great details of things that folks were releasing about themselves. And I was um, uh, just really shocked about that. And um, some of the things that I'm learning to like on and not like on, I'm like, oh, so I like on too much. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like, you know, 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 you you know, that, that was this, this was a serious thing. And sure enough, she ended up getting in a relationship with the person, but it didn't end up working out. Right. So anyway, I just thought that was amazing. But we have a few more minutes before this hour's up. I cannot believe we have about six more minutes before the hour's up. But, um, of course, we go into the next hour, but I want to respect Brother Herman's show, uh, the Final Call News Hour. Wanted to know from you, you not only deal with relationships, you not only deal with education and conflict resolution, but I believe I saw a video of you where you were ministering at the flagship mosque Maryam in Chicago, Illinois. Am I right about that, sir? I, I had the by Allah's grace, I had the opportunity to uh, share a few words before one of the main lectures one time. So, and that was quite humbling. A, a video probably showed my legs were shaking. I was very. <laughs> <laughs> Will you? I had the opportunity to do that. But when I have the when I have the opportunities to do that, I always want to bear witness to the character of the humble most far kind. And I'll share this with you. A brother told me, look at the character of the minister. The minister was having a meeting with some brothers. And after they were meeting, while they were meeting, the minister asked the brothers, Would you all like some water? And the brothers like, Yeah, we would like some water. So the minister asked one of the brothers, one of his staff, to go and get some water. When they came back, they had like like mountain ice water for everybody else and they gave the minister uh fiji water right okay and when the minister the honorable minister louis farrakhan saw that he stopped and he said wait a minute why do they have mountain ice and i have fiji right. he said, they don't have the same quality of water that i have are you trying to say that they are less than me mm. oh now that's a very small example, but it shows how the minister views us. Right. The minister playing when he says that he sees us as being greater than himself. So I say that to use that analogy when I have the opportunity to be, to share the words, I try to bear witness of, to the minister to let people know the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan is a million times more principled. Like, mm. as you see in the public, he's even more like that when you're in the private with him. Yes, sir. Wow. Yes, sir. Well, let me let me ask you this, Brother Willie, before we get out of here, because we are running up on time, because we, we mentioned that you're an author and you're an educator and all of that. So if you could, because we'd like to help you get off some of them, them wonderful books. Yeah. If you have any books that are coming out, any websites that you need to drop, just go ahead well, and, and let's put it out there right now. I have some books that you can get on Amazon, and now that you mentioned, I'm have a brother put a link on our website. But there's a book written titled "The Journey to Get the Love You Desire Begins with You." I would encourage people to get that. There's another one that I wrote specifically for members of the Nation of Islam. It's titled "A Message to the Single, Courting, Married, and Divorced Believers," mm. and also have one that's teaching brothers and sisters in the Nation of Islam methods that we can use on how to study. And there's another book that I wrote titled uh, How to Know That a Lot is Present During Our Trials. Mm. So if you go to Amazon.com, type in my name, Willie Muhammad, you can actually see it. You can go to our website, www.noineworleans.com. We just, a couple of months ago, we premiered a documentary about the history yes, of the nation. And you can order it and stream it. So check it out. Give us some feedback. Yes, sir, brother. Man, that's beautiful. And and I and I'd love to um get with you a little bit later on, man, because we want to do the history of Islam in Denver as well. But we we'd love to get with you uh, later on, brother Willie, and just discuss that whole history of Islam in New Orleans because I know it's a powerful um history. 
uh, the other thing that I wanted to um, get at before we get out of here is, of course, how the people can reach you on social media. I have at Truth Spreader. Uh, I know that's your Instagram, but give them where else they can reach you. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty booked on the uh, Facebook friends, but uh, Facebook under Willie Muhammad. I'm on Twitter at B as in boy, R-O-W-M-4-6. So bro, W-M-4-6 on Twitter. Yes, sir. Instagram, they can reach us on our uh, YouTube page, My46AV, and I have a, a YouTube page where I deal with one minute relationship tips, which is called The Love You Desire. So yes, you type sir. The Love You Desire, Willie Muhammad. Oh man, that's beautiful. It is. And Sister Vicky, you have one more thing you want to add? Well, just, just that, um, wanted to just, you briefly, uh, you're also a radio show host, right? Yes, uh, I have a radio show here in the city of New Orleans. It's on WBOK 1230 AM. It's the only black owned radio station here in the city of New Orleans. Wow. That's awesome. Wow. Praise be to Allah. Well, sir, you Praise have be. certainly um, blessed our socks off. I consider it to be a great, <laughs> a, a great privilege and honor that you would join us. And before I was um, able to connect with you on, uh, directly on social media, I certainly saw the good work you were doing. I was following your relationship tips, the wisdom and the integrity with which you spoke. And then, like I said, I tried to follow some of the stuff you were doing on YouTube uh, as well. And you are in a line. In our short few months, Brother Herman, of being with PB Radio, you have blessed us in a beautiful line of not only, of course, our connection with Brother Herman and his show, The Final Call News Hour. And of course, I just happen to be privileged to be a part of our study group where he <laughs> is the main coordinator and director of it. But um, I believe that's the right title. But um, also, Brother uh, Ben X has been on, uh, Brother um, Riza, Brother uh, Demetri Muhammad. Um, we had a couple of local activists on. And then here you, our brother. Then we have Brother Ilya Rashad scheduled to come on, inshallah, um, uh, June 7th. And I'm not going to say the next guest. We're waiting for the official date. But we're hoping to get some recurring uh, folks from the uh, research group uh, to come on as well. So we want to thank you so much for blessing us, gracing us with your presence. And I'm certainly just tickled pink because, you know, um, I, you know, Brother Herman is my, my big brother. You know, in the oh, nation, absolutely. you know, and I'm their little sister. And so um, having recently recited last year, although I've been following the teachings for years, it is such a blessing. And I want to thank you so much for your uh, integrity, your example, and the good work that you're doing in the resurrection of our people. Brother oh, Herman. Crazy. Uh, and thank you all. I really mean that. I know you all are saying it's an honor, but I'm honored to be able to be on your show, Brother Herman, the work that you're doing. I know you're a barber as well. Yes, yes sir. Right. Yes. Yes, sir. I, I mean, <laughs> and I'll listen to what she's doing with the radio broadcast. Man, thank you all. If there's anything that I can do, don't hesitate to reach out. Oh, man. We appreciate you, big brother. And we love you. Yes. And, um, you know, I've never been to New Orleans. I got some people from Louisiana, but I've never been that far down south. We kind of like up in, in, in central Louisiana, yeah. Shreveport and around that area. But yeah. um, I got to get down to... to uh, New Orleans, and you know I gotta stop through miles number forty six. Yeah, come see my brother. When you get ready to come down, let me know, man, because I would love to believe it's to hear from you. Praise be to Allah. Yes, really? sir, brother. I'm coming to the city, and I don't know. Please. <laughs> <laughs> we got you, man. And, and the same thing up in Denver, brother. Whenever That's you right. come up north, man, you come come play in the mountains, not in the snow, <laughs> but in the mountains. You know what I'm saying? Let me know. <laughs> Yes, sir. <laughs> All right, brother. May Allah yeah, bless God. you, brother. Ramadan Mubarak as well. Ramadan, Ramadan Kareem. Kareem. Thank you so very much, family. There you have it. Brother Herman, I'm going to let you sign up with your show before we go on. Oh, and let awesome. me say, man, you, you've oh, been watching this very special edition of the Final Call News Hour. We, we didn't get a chance to really cover what we had going on in the newspaper, but look, let me show it to you again. Let me turn this down a little bit. <clears throat> but the current edition, uh, the current edition, the current issue of the Final Call News Paper. Yes, yay. It's Jay-Z under siege, hip-hop entrepreneur and social activist called Professor Security and Exchange Commission. 
amid other fights in the music and production industry should be be worried that's the latest edition of the final call if you don't uh you could always come by let me show you supreme style come on now. supreme style barbers come on now. and uh 7520 east colfax <laughs> and pick that up yeah. um you can visit our site at astar2.com mm -hmm. um great work and what i want what I, what I wanted you to do also is go to that site astar2.com because we are trying to raise money for our Denver study group, our building fund. Um, so you can go to that to that site on the homepage, click on donate and donate any amount because uh, we need to build Islam in the city, establish Islam in the city. And the only way we're going to be able to do that is if we can have some land or some property that we can call our own. So that's our, uh, uh, our intention. So please, if you feel so inclined, Help us do yes. that. I'm going to give you my social media information. Yes. We heard where Brother Willie could be reached. You can reach me, Herman Supreme Style Muhammad on Facebook, or at Brother Herman on Instagram and Twitter. Look, man, it's been an honor. I want to thank Sister uh, Vicky, thank, thank Ms. Pat, yes. and thank you all for watching and listening and tuning in. Man, we love y'all. We miss y'all. Yes. Um, Tune in next week and look out for more shows and keep watching Sister Vicky on PBRadioLive.com. Her show is every Tuesday and Thursday from 12, Monday and Thursday. I'm sorry. I got Tuesday. Monday. It is Monday, right? It is Monday. Monday and Thursday. Yes, sir. From 12 p.m. to 2 p.m. Um, again. And I got to show you this too. DigitalFinalCall.com if you don't if you don't yes. come to the shop, you can always pick up the, the paper digitally at digitalfinalcall.com. Remember, man, love y'all, miss y'all. Listen, stay black, stay strong. And remember, if you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. Peace. Peace. And we Peace. is out. All right. Yes, we're going to take a quick break. And we'll be no one can make an intelligent decision without being properly informed. This is why this world wants to control the media. This is why media hype can take you up, take you down. So you don't know anymore who's really good because the media can make a wicked man look good and make a good man look evil. That is why. Keeping my eye on Clinton, watching each movie make. Cause every slither he takes, so.